give it a second. Okay, so we are live now, John. So yes. welcome everybody to the How to Write a Book in 40 Hour webinar today. It is an absolute honor to be speaking today with the founder of the website. John, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your surname. Could you introduce yourself and just give us a bit of a background about what your project is all about? Yes, yeah, sure. John Castagnini. Hello, everyone. You can hear me okay, yes? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I'll, I'll share a little bit about my background. So uh, I'm going to share a little bit of my history and some of the accolades. Uh, my goal is not to be bragging in any way, but you are asking me to share uh, what we've done and accomplished. So, you know, t please take it in that light, okay, everyone? We're good with that? Okay. Um, well, I began the, as far as the Thank God I series, I began this about uh, several years ago. My lifelong study has been to understand and uh, inquire into the universal principles that are guiding us and how the universe works. So I've been uh, steadfast and focused on that since I'm 17 years old, so that's uh, almost 25 years now. And uh, I've, really, I've really made a, li a living at doing that since I'm uh, pretty much a professional for the past couple of decades. Um, along the road, there were, there were so many journeys along the road. I, I've done seminars around the world with people like Dr. John Martini and Dr. Wayne Dyer, and I uh, was fortunate, very fortunate to attend chiropractic school and immerse myself into the sciences and really get focused on uh, how could I serve people and share the universe. Uh, that's, that's, been, that's been a mantra in my mind for quite a long time now. Uh, along the road, I, I discovered um, fairly early on, I was studying with a monk from India, this concept of balance, um, this concept of studying Raja Yoga. I'm a, a martial artist, and the yin-yang was a very... Uh, prominent part of my studies in understanding this overall balance that uh, exists in the universe and that this balance although it exists in every moment we are not ex in tune quite there's quite a lot of moments in our lives where we're not in tune with this overall balance that exists because we experience you know our emotions and our perceptions and our judgments and we have the challenges of life so I became immersed in the study of how do we um, observe this balance. This and the the yin yang was studied was a uh, prominent figure of my studies. I stayed very focused on the understanding of how to study the Tao or the Way. And along the process, I discovered that it really was in balancing our perceptions. It really was in balancing our emotions that we can bring ourselves back to this place of back to this place where we're ultimately thankful and present for what is as it is and in my 20s i discovered really the only thing happening for us in life was that we were all having these emotional fluctuations we in every area of our life you know it could be based we could have challenges based upon our finances or you know our relationships or in our vocation, but ultimately, life was a series of these escalations and these depressions, and that we were having these highs and these lows, and that these highs and these lows were based upon the judgments we had and the perceptions we've had, and that eventually, in life, we would attract enough information to bring ourselves to balance. And I also discovered along my journey that when we did bring ourselves to a place of balance and presence, what we formally saw as a challenge or something that was in our way was when we saw the other side of it, we were able to say, well, I'm thankful for that. I see both sides of it and our heart opened and we were able to say, well, I, thank God that happened or I'm thankful that that happened in my life for something as challenging as experiencing a divorce or something in, or like abuse even. Because we attracted enough information to realize that that was the universe giving us both sides, the support and the challenge, and that both sides were actually serving us. And so that our, that our life was this series of experiences with the next one being the next 
challenge or the next perception br coming to us and us then seeing one side and then experiencing this other side and then passing through this moment of grace and this place of presence. So I decided to dedicate my life to uh, really exploring this understanding of experiencing some, uh, uh, this experience of life, our perceptions, and coming back to this place of presence and thankfulness. Now, I worked with thousands of people um, in work in s consulting and doing workshops around the world, helping th helping other people bring their perceptions to balance based upon whatever challenges they were going through. So some of them were going through divorce, or they went through some, they've been through abuse, or you could name it, and I pretty much work with people at balancing their perceptions until they were able to get to the place of, well, I'm thankful that that happened. And in the process, at that place, it was real clear that they transcended with something that formally ran their lives. You know, the challenges that we're experiencing change in face and place and name from, you know, in, but ultimately, if you look closely, you could see people having the same relationship at 14 that they're having at 44, that they're having at 74, quite often with different people or with the same person because they have the same judgments and the same perceptions. And until they bring those judgments and perceptions to a place of balance and a place of appreciation, they re we repeat the patterns. That became apparent to me. So in spending many years working with people to, uh, that were willing to and inspired to, I worked with them to, well, discover both sides of whatever happened in their life, no matter what the challenge was. Well, several of these people wanted to write their, um, they, they, they were really inspired, and several of them came to me and wanted to write their story. I mean, even women who went through the experience of rape, they even wanted to write their story, how they went through this horrific, challenging experience, but um, as a result of their experience, they became a black belt, or they studied. They studied, and they got themselves out there, and they protected their family. They made sure that their family was protected. They became, you know, really, um, really focused. One created a radio show. One created a women's group. The point was that they discovered how even the challenges in life were a great blessing, and they wanted to write their story. So that was part of the genesis of the Thank God I series. Then. I had my own personal experience. Um, you know, it's one thing to work with other people <laughs> and help them through their challenges, right? It's another thing to actually take the work and apply it to your great challenges in life. So in my young 30s, my mom passed away, and she was my best friend, and she was 56 years old. And um, it real. It, she was by far my <laughs> very closest person in my life, and I was pissed and I was angry, and I was not in a place of presence, and I was not in a place of well, I'm thankful for this. So, I said to myself, well, you know, you've been studying this concept and practicing at a certain level that you know there's an underlying perfection in everything, there's a perfect balance in everything. To be thankful for everything that happens, you've worked with hundreds, thousands of people and helping them get to a place of presence to balance out their perceptions, to balance out their judgments so that they can transcend stuff. And you've done it for yourself in some minor stuff, but John, this is your great test. So after my mom passed, I went uh, down to Florida and I spent three weeks alone. And I did the work that I've done with others with on myself. Um, I found 300 plus traits of my mom and I looked for where do those traits exist now because I know energy or matter isn't created or destroyed we're energy we're not created or destroyed everything is eternally present everything's in the eternal now and I identified well where is mom now and I discovered her in the pe different people places and circumstances around me I s then spent the time looking for what are the advantages of the passing what were the disadvantages she stayed how have the roles changed the point was I did the work I walked the walk that I worked with so many people on my deepest stuff. Well, on my deepest challenge. And, well, three weeks after I was doing this, well, after I did this for three weeks, I was in a parking lot with my girlfriend, and I met this woman named Lorraine. And that was a little strange, because my mom's name was Lorraine, this strange woman I just met. Um, this woman was also 56 years old. Okay, kind of strange. My mom just passed away, Lorraine, 56 years old. 
uh, the woman was from New York, uh, from Brooklyn, New York. Here I am in Florida. She's smoking a cigarette. She's drinking a cup of coffee. Yeah, you know, my mom smoked three packs of cigarettes a day, and she drank ten cups of coffee. So, <laughs> kind of strange. Here I am with another Lorraine from New York, from Brooklyn, New York, smoking a cigarette, drinking a cup of coffee. Fifty-six years old. I turned around to my girlfriend, and I said, to her, "I guarantee you that this woman's birthday is January 9th. So I I looked at Lorraine and I said, "Excuse me, Lorraine, when's your birthday?" And she stared right through my eyes and she said, "January 9th. Why?" Now, my girlfriend looked at me and she like she was like, "What? Are you, what are you, some kind of alien? You know, how did you know that that happened? You know?" And I said, "So it's, it's really simple. You know, I, I just spent three weeks becoming present to the eternal now to honor the transformation of my mother because life and death are one. Everything that we're experiencing is in the eternal now. We're dead and alive at the same time. Time is an illusion of the mind. Mom is eternally present. Mom gave me the greatest gift." She helped me transcend the illusion that there was any separation in space-time between life and death and that we are eternally present. And I was able to say, because I knew the probability of me manifesting another Lorraine from New York, smoking a cigarette, drinking a cup of coffee, 56 years old, and me saying, oh, I guarantee you that she's born on the day, not even my mom's birthday, the day she died. I guarantee you she's born on January 9th. I knew the probabilities didn't exist. But I also realized that the gift that she gave me was a deeper understanding into the uh, into the principles of the way the universe worked. So I wrote my thank God my mom died story. And you might say that the combination of me working with these women who transcended their stuff and wanted to write their thank God I stories, and then me having my own personal experience and writing my story, that was the genesis of the series. That's how it all began. Um, now the company I the company that I started with was uh, it, it was not what I thought it would the way I, if you I was definitely not the way that I thought it would evolve. I thought from the very beginning uh, people would just send in their thank God I stories right you know and all of a sudden um, we'd have these stories and we would go publish a series like Chicken Soup for the Soul is what I thought right away. Um, my you know my own ignorance in, in the learning curve several years ago. Uh, it's not quite the way it worked because people were mailing stuff in and I was like, well, what's this? Oh my God, I don't have no idea what this person just mailed in to us, right? But it was a blessing because I realized that even though people had these amazing stories, um, they, they even though they, they, they didn't know how to express them or they definitely were able to use help expressing them at the very least, um, they had these great stories, and they wanted to get them out to the world. They definitely had the inspiration to actually take the time, let write it, and figure out how can I write this? How can I get the story out to the world? And I, I realized the importance of create, working with a team of people and ev evolving a team of people that be were masterful at story writing, at story coaching, and putting together some helping out authors put together incredible thank God I stories. So we, we I put together Hollywood script writers, Emmy nominated people, amazing people that were able that really banded together to help our clients create these amazing stories. You know, that's that was the inception of the series and, and part of the major evolution. Now along the way um, we've had well, some of you might have had the experience of the internet creeping in, right? You know, and creeping, in, creeping in and changing the uh, the way we do business a little bit. Well, it, it, when that first occurred, you know, I had distribution set up through the best distributor, and here we were, and we sold tens of thousands of books, and you know, we're moving, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, well, Borders is closing. What does that mean? Oh, there's no bookstores to sell your bookstores to, right? Um, so at first that was like, okay, uh, the internet, oh, that's going to be big, right? Um, well, we, I became intensely focused on understanding, uh, how do we evolve in the new day with these stories? Because there were, you know, we had people from all around the world that, you know, sharing stories in countries all around the world that wanted to share in the next book. And we produced, you know, we already published these three books and we already published these hundreds of authors. And, but, it, and, it, but it was very clear that, it, in the people that were going through divorce wanted to connect with the people who wrote Thank God I Got a Divorce. And that the people that were going through cancer wanted to connect with the people who had wrote Thank God I Got Cancer. 
because you know it obviously you know when someone's been through something similar to you that's the easiest way to say hey I, I know this person understands and and you're it, you become open you become an open vessel to hearing what does this person have to say because they can really understand me so at first it was a little scary because it was like okay what are we gonna do the net the distribution changed blah 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 but then the light bulb went on and I realized I realized wow we could reach people at the speed of light we could reach oh oh no warehousing oh we could you know oh we could translate into different languages quickly we could we could reach people right at their very home at the computer of uh, the um, and the and that the speed that we were able to take in stories work with people over the net give me that but the original way that i thought the company would start and evolve it was a mu it was actually a much um, a much more improved way of doing business and reaching people this this internet as long as we stayed focused on it and we focused on it as a team so I'm gave you a, I gave you a little bit of a background to understand you know our history and getting to this point um, along the way we've achieved many milestones we've had 48,000 downloads in a couple of days along the way I was very fortunate to get us on ABC TV we've Fortunately, we featured in a film in the top of, in Germany, and I, I'm currently set up to do seminars with uh, some of the most famous and most successful ball players in the world. Because what I discovered was there's multiple ways to build build the business and serve you guys and serve the authors. Because that's really what this was all about. Somebody just typed something in here. Oh, somebody just joined. Okay, I'm reading this while while I'm doing this, ladies. It's new to me. I'm used to using Skype. Anyway, um, what I realized was that our job was really to help people write their story and get their story out to the world. And there was a slew of people that wanted to do that because everyone had everyone had their own unique experience, their own unique way of expressing it. And what I discovered was instantly we have a way to help people. Number one, write something great create something great get credibility because we've published New York Times bestsellers we thought we've published authors who have sold two million copies of their books and then also get publicity and get their you know get their story out to the world I've been watching you know people publish their story with us and in the process get all kinds of consulting gigs get all kinds of speaking gigs I, we recently had one of our authors, you know, we pu published their story and as a result of it they hooked up and were all of a sudden they're helping the families of the people in Kenya, you know, they're, they're because they're a grief specialist and they were hired by the American Association down there to help those families. So I, what we're doing with this is really making change in the world and helping people connect with other people that are having challenges. I'm being told that I am cutting in and out. Is that true, Gertrude, or could everyone hear me? Yes? It's better now. Okay. Um, so that's what we're here for. What we've became dedicated to primary is do you, do if you have something to share with the world that's a story of a challenge that you've been through, I went through this challenge. I went through a divorce. I know what it's like. It sucked. It kicked my ass. But as a result of it, I got this out of it. And this is who I've become as a result of it. And I want to share this. If you have something like that, that's what we're looking for as a publisher to help you fine tune and craft that into a brilliant story. And the importance of that I can't underestimate. I'm just I'll share a little bit with you in terms of working with professionals. I worked recently worked with um, a William Whitecloud. He's uh, he's been a very successful author. He sold millions of books actually in Australia. And after he wrote his story as a client with us, with our team, he said to us.
Okay, this is about, for me, it's, so this is about getting the message out there that no matter what you've been through, there are two, that people can learn the concept of becoming thankful for what challenged them and get themselves to that point. And we share with people how to do that through courses and through the stories. So I just want to make, I just want to make real clear that the foundation of what Thank God I is about is about that mission to share with people this understanding. Now at the business level, to grow, to serve the authors, to serve the readers, to serve the people who work with us. Ultimately, it's about getting the Thank God I stories out there to the world. That's what it's about because that's how we connect with audiences. That's how we connect with the media. That's how we connect with the, the readers. So after you've crafted something genius with us, we our interest is in getting it out there for the next you know, year, five years, ten years, we don't care. We see a right place for your story. We're going to promote your story. So that's, so that's, in a nutshell, who we are and what we're about. And they're in. All right. I'm here now. Gertrude says she's sorry. She dropped off the call. Please type in your questions, and I'm ready to answer questions. Thanks, John. That, that's awesome. Um, I dropped off there for a second, but it looks like it did keep recording, which is great. Um, so what I want to do now is just open up the floor for questions and answers. And I'll start off because um, I've been working with you for the past month. And I just want to share with everybody what we've done so far. And then you could answer the questions that have come up for me um, going forward. OK, so, great. Um, I think most of the people on the line have already read my Thank God I story um, that was posted last week. And basically, I, I wrote my first draft almost a month ago. And um, John assigned somebody to, to coach me so I could write a really short concise story, um, which I found very challenging because I'm a very wordy person. I use lots of words. And to try and bring it down to under 2,000 words was challenging, but the help that I got was absolutely fantastic. And what I learned from writing that story was just how to communicate your message with very few words, but hitting on all of the, the key points. So John, I just want you to give us a little bit of a background about the people who are helping us craft the story. And I know you mentioned that most of them have worked for Hollywood. Give us a bit of a background about the, the writing coaches and, and how they operate. Now is John still there? Because if you're still there, John, you are muted, so you might have to unmute your your mic. So if you look at the top of the screen, the third, uh, the second icon Wait, from your of, left, you know, a single, yeah, a single sentence that will describe what your brand's about, or you know, a TV show itself. What do they do? They look to create like a log line, right, in one single line. And what I've discovered is that by helping by helping people craft something in three or four pages and narrowing down there first, it really has helped a lot of authors go on and then be able to extend the skills that they learn with our team into writing their books. You Like you just said, Gertrude, the, uh, the uh, story consultants that we're utilizing are write Hollywood scripts. They've been Emmy nominated. They're, they're really amazing at not only story structure. They've dedicated their life to it. That's what they do. Um, but also teaching story structure. So part of our program is that what we do is we have a story writing guidelines that we hand to our clients. They read the guidelines and then they go back and forth with our consultants for three hours for three drafts. So they'll write a draft, they go through it for an hour. They write a draft, they go through it for an hour, they write a draft, go through it for an hour till we get it to completion. Excellent. Now, I, see, I see a question here. Should I answer any of the questions here? Would you like me to do that or no? Yes, let's answer them as, as we go. Let's start with Miriam's question. Miriam okay. says, I just realized that my biggest story has still not transformed into something I feel grateful for. And I've just learned to let go of the story 
and to let go of my identification with the story. So for somebody who's going through something right now and hasn't quite come out to the end, um, well, what would you advise? Because I know Miriam's got a fascinating story and she is in the middle of quite a lot of stuff. Uh-huh. Okay, well, I, there's a couple of ways to answer that question, Miriam. Um, Mar uh, the, the first question is, do you want to bring that story full circle to the point where you've got it to, you know, brought it to the place of gratitude, you brought it to the place of appreciation for yourself? Okay, well, in, in that we help people do that. Um, part of the Thank God I story writing process is actually asking the questions and doing the process to get yourself to the point where you've equilibrated it and you've come full circle. So the, the story writing process itself helps people do that. But in addition to that, Miriam, um, my, my expertise is in the process of equilibration in helping people get to the point, get to that point. And we have a course that we that I go through every Thursday night um, that is also recorded on a balancing perceptions in order to get to a place of equilibration and the practice of that. And obviously you would apply that to your life for your story and for whatever else is going to go on in your life. So uh, the entire function of our company is to help you get to that point for your story, because well, your life is your story, you know, and you're going to have different stories and different experiences, right? That you're going to go through to bring to the uh, thankfulness place. And, and okay. Miriam, feel free to to chip in here. Um, you, you can turn on your mic and speak if you want to. If you've got any other questions while you're you're talking to John, did that clarify? Did that clarify things for you, Miriam? I've uh, just unmuted my microphone. Thank okay, you, for you John. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right, great. Um, um, it, uh, my question actually referred to something that uh, happened 23 years ago. Uh, it was a quite a massive story in which uh, my uh, first partner died. And um, he got killed. It was a nasty situation. And I have learned to disidentify with it, just to move on. And I'm doing quite fine at the moment. Of course, being met with, with new challenges, as life does, but um, would that be, because I've just realized that I'm still not grateful for what happened back then, would it be beneficial to still go back to that story and learn how to, and to share it, and because I thought it's better to not share it again, because I, I just want to get over it, I just want to go move on. Miriam, let me share something. I've been in the field of um, uh, personal development. When I say personal, it's a very specific focus. My focus has been conscious transformation. And what I've discovered, I just spoke um, out in uh, California after in between two people from The Secret. And um, it, was, it, it was very clear to me and, and, and in my mid-20s, which is well, almost 20 years ago now, <laughs> God, time flies, right, that anything we have not brought to a place of equilibration which is balance, peace, inspiration, open-hearted and thankfulness. This is uh, we keep attracting and living in our lives until we do in some form. So abs in other words that any of the emotions you still have about that experience until you uh, allow yourself to see both sides of it was something that served you perfectly. It is something that will run your life in some way and you will attract the people, places and events into your life that will push your buttons until you do bring that, that um, experience to a place of thankfulness and appreciation. That's why I did this work in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because I realized I did this work in the place in the, not to start a book series. I, the book series itself is a way to reach people with the message that's beyond me because I didn't want this to be about John Castagnini. I really didn't. Um, I really want because I, I know it's about the teaching. It's about the, the getting to the place of well, I'm thankful for I'm thankful with an open heart. I see some, I see both sides of something equally, and I transcended it. And I realized that that meant that it made sense for me to put together 
the people who went through these experiences who are going through them to the people that have transcended those specific experiences and to put a system together for that. But at the very core of what Thank God I is, it's about the material that can will serve you in bringing that to balance so that you are in a place of inner peace with it. That makes sense, Miriam? It does. I thought John was still speaking and he... Um, yeah, so he disappeared. Yes, it, it does make perfectly sense. Yes, if John can hear me, well, thank you very much for that. But I didn't hear you at the end. A vast virus database... So, John, are you still online? Repeating and the process itself yeah. will help John, you John? Yeah? Uh, you, you seem, your mic seems to be coming in and out. Oh, so we okay. didn't catch the tail end of what you said. If you could just go back a okay. few seconds, yeah. The, pro the process itself of writing the story and the process of equilibration, Miriam, will help you address the challenge that you're going through and the emotions that are there so that you could bring it to perfect balance. And at that point, you transcend it and you're done with that story. You open your heart and you open up your life to a new set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah, I've been doing. You're very welcome. I've been doing this when I when I was when I became clear that wow, we keep attracting the same patterns. Until we can say I'm thankful for that. That was part of the um, what struck me to start the series in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to serve you on that road, and that's part of that's part of what that's a big reason we do this. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Awesome. I see Karen has got a question here. She says, "How many words?" Is the article supposed to be? Typically about 1,500 words, Karen. Karen, um, do you have anything you want to, to ask? No. I just think what you're doing is fantastic. <laughs> it's, it's sort of putting in, you know, it's, it's like it's, it's healing people as well as getting you know, making money and getting their books out. I just find the whole thing really cool. Well, thank you. And and obviously, you include your bio and you have your other works. And th and that's the, the from a business perspective for each of you. Um, that's a you know, what you do is here's my story. You're sharing that with the world. Oh, and my name is Karen, and I'm the author of blah blah blah. And here's my site. That's blah blah blah. So you're using obviously using it as a promotional tool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. yeah. Your story is your message, John. Your story, and, and well, that's how you, we all know this, I and mean, we know this, everyone on this call would know that your story in and of itself is what people connect with. It's, you know, that's, that's what they'll remember you with. People learn in the form of story. So you sharing your deeper stuff, the stuff in your heart, brilliantly, really opens people up to you. But you all know that. Yeah, yeah. So, Any John... Other? Um, in terms of what we've done for me so far, so I just want to give people a bit of feedback of what's happened since. Um, so when my story went up, I, I, I shared the link with a few people last week and through Facebook. Um, it's surprising how even through LinkedIn this morning, did you see the response I got there, John? No, I, I haven't seen it yet, no. Um, there's a lady who I must have connected with on LinkedIn. I don't really know her personally. I think she's based in Australia, uh, but she came across the the story on the on the website, and you know sent me a message just talking about gosh our lives are so you know parallel. I think she must have missed a flight somewhere in her life, but it seemed like she could relate to my story, and she immediately wrote back. I also I had um, a girl who was my sister's friend, who I last saw her in high school hundreds of years ago and and she popped up on the website as well and, and put in a comment about how she wanted to, to help me when I you know went back to Zimbabwe to to start doing this work so and that's you're, been <laughs> uh -huh. I'm sorry for cutting you off I, I'm sorry I didn't thank you I, I, did I cut you off no 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 go for it okay so um, here's the thing uh, ladies and gentlemen and mainly ladies um, here's the thing 
like I, I I said, this is not this is a lifelong. It really is a lifelong project for myself and the team we have around us. It's in terms of you know this is what we're doing, this is what we will be doing, and this is what I am doing <laughs> for my lifetime. Um, I became, it's a singular focus. In other words, we're share, w it, within five years, we, our focus is to make certain that when people say the words, thank God, which we can all agree probably everyone says that at some point in their life, multiple times per year probably, that they can't not think of thank God I in some way and that's where we are with this and the way we're getting from where we are to that point is through your stories and that's why a couple of things are really important number one the quality um, that's you know like I said when I first started the company everyone was sending stuff in and I was like oh my god what is this help me god um, you know, and I realized this. It's we 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 have to work with people so that they can get it brilliantly. They can get it brilliantly expressed, at least expressed, so that people can connect with it and understand. That's not the first thing. I real. It became clear to me that the writing of the story itself, Miriam, like we was discussing with Miriam, is in and of itself healing. It's a part of the healing process. So much so that I'm creating a certification program where people are writing 12 Thank God I stories, um, one for their mother, their father, their sister, their brother, because in, in the archetypes of that, because like uh, Joseph Campbell referred to, because ultimately the challenges that we have are with it, the, the archetypes, and that it became clear to me that writing the story in of itself and utilizing the equilibration process is the learning of the experience of how to get to the thank God I place, which is the place of presence. And ultimately, really, that's how we evolve our consciousness. We evolve our consciousness by discovering uh, where our challenges are, where the, the emotions lead us there, we balance our perceptions, and we get to the place of, oh, thank God for that. That's the place of presence. Eckhart Tolle calls it the power of now. Well, writing your thank God I story is getting you there. It gets the reader there. And what I'm sharing is Gertrude just shared how um, you know she was getting results on LinkedIn. What I'm sharing with all of you is here. Our focus is for the next year, three years, five years, ten years, is to take your stories and put them in the right places so that people can take them, read them, and find them. Because that's how we're gaining market share. That's how we're connecting with our audience. So you could say we're a, we're also really a media publicist in writing your story. We play that role as well. Okay, and and the reason why I I um I joined is because anyone can write a book, and the challenge will always come in creating that online platform where you can actually sell the books. And so I just want you to touch on how you grow the platform. And by a platform, guys, I'm I'm talking about people who follow you online, who listen to your message, who spread your message, who buy yeah, your products, who buy your books. Let me a little share a little bit about that, how what we already have. Now, like I said, and I'm a very open book um, in terms of building something and sharing that it's been a learning experience, ladies and gentlemen. And anyone that tries to play a different, you know, <laughs> anyone that shares a different tune is is, is, is usually bullcrapping you on it. I mean, it, it, building anything is a learning experience. Um, and one of the learning experiences first it was, oh, what's a website and how to build one and the the I'm amount of... Platform, guys, I'm, I'm talking about... Okay. So, sorry. That's sorry, okay. Anyway. That's okay. That's, that's okay. Um, but I'll, I'll get to the platform in a second. Uh, but I just want to, I want to express this clearly. Um, at first it was what's a website you know how do you build a website that works how does it function what's it about and and you know there were days where I wanted to no question pull my hair out and really how to learn how to balance a lot of technology stuff you know from a equilibration standpoint um, to get that right then it became clear to me um, the importance of building systems and I was like oh my god it's all about building systems and what systems are and communication and inflow and outflow and communicating and looking people up but once I, we went through a tremendous amount of work, we really did, to learn how to put systems together to communicate your message to an audience. But once that was done and up and we got the hang of it, we understood our system in and of itself 
we link into 500,000 entrepreneurs with every story and blog that we put up instantly. It goes, and these are entrepreneurs that actually, you know, uh, not, you know, imaginary people in Twitter. That, that's just one thing that we have in place right now that I added to our system so that your story is actually read, you know, and it's being read and it's, people are actually responding to it. So that's, that's what we mean as a platform. And I'm dedicated to consistently elevating and escalating that platform now that the structure and the foundation and the systems are done and there and in place and have been tested and our system works and it's already, you know, it's already getting results. My focus is, okay, I'm going to get thank God I stories from top ball players, top musicians because so that we can open up what? More market share, more media, so, so that we get more and more eyeballs, and that's what we'll be doing for the next, you know, decades. Really, that's what we'll continuously be doing. So that's how we are a platform where um, we will put your story so that people can read it and it can be featured. Does that does that explain a little further, Gertrude? Yes, yes, that does that does explain. Um, so now that I've, I've written the story, I know that you said the next step in the process is to record um, a video. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, video or an audio. Um, if you go to our site, you can look and see that we have some up there already. Um, one is with, uh, like, for instance, the founder of BNI. If you're not familiar with BNI, is it's I, I it's the largest live networking group in the world. It's got millions and millions of people in it. They have city meetings every, pretty much every day for the last 15 years. His name is Ivan Meisner who put that together. And so like we did his interview in audio that's on our site as well. And um, Sean Korn, we just got her story and she was molested when she was six. It's an amazing story. Sean Korn's one of the preeminent yoga instructors in the world. And she's um, she shares her amazing journey and what she went through and how she actually transcended that and brought that into her heart and how that drove her in her life. But here's a person that's reaching millions and millions of people and bringing in millions and millions of dollars for her charities through some a project called Off the Mat. And you know she shares her interview. Now, what does that mean to all of you? Well, what we're doing is you know, we get visibility with those interviews. Um, you know, we get traffic with those interviews, and your interview gets put with their interview on our site and through social media. So, besides the fact that you could use it as an accolade, where in your bio and in your media that you are published in a series alongside blah blah blah, just like I'm in a film, I say I'm in a film. I, I utilize this all the time. I'm featured in a film alongside His Holiness the Dalai Lama. People love that, you know. It, I'm blessed. I really am, and I was. And that opens up speaking engagements, which some of you might be looking for. And it opens up doors in media, and it raises eyebrows. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that we're good at what we do, but there's no question that uh, by being, uh, by clearly expressing that you're featured alongside and with, besides getting more eyeballs, it gives you credibility in the marketplace as well. So we so what, part of what we do is either a video or an audio interview with you, and we circulate that on the site and through media. Okay, awesome. So that answers your question, Karen. Whether it's um, audio only, it it will be it can be both. Yeah, yeah, um, it could be audio or video. Yes. Okay. Now, Cassandra, you um, you mentioned something here that uh, you know somebody who's um, a hearing impaired woman you'd like to share this with. Do you want to just um, share what touched you there? I think something hit a nerve while John was speaking. Are you saying me or are you saying Cassandra? Uh, no, I'm asking Cassandra to, to just pitch in because she put a few notes in the chat Cassandra, window. You're being, you're being called to the mic, young lady. Oh, hi. Um, no, it was just you know the usual stuff he was going over about the equilibration stuff that I didn't have a chance to write down. And actually, a woman reached out to us the other day that was hearing impaired and it would be awesome to like hand this to her this whole thing in um, text so she could read it since she can't listen in on it okay yes yeah, so, so what I'll do is I will um, get my audio typist to type up the the transcripts and I'll, I'll email that through to you then you can share that yeah and, and I, I'd like to add something there um, just a little bit about Cassandra Cassandra um, 
she's she had uh, experience when she was young, and uh, part of what I did with her was help her equilibrate that, and that's how we met. And as a result of it, she's become inspired to write her Thank God I story and share her Thank God I story and help people around the world with it. And she just, you know, Cassandra just mentioned um, a hearing impaired woman. Well, we published a story by a, a gentleman, a young gentleman who recently passed away about a year ago. His name is Ben Underwood. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with Ben, but Ben was on Oprah and he, he was able to do something called echolocation where he would make this sound like this and he would balance you know that sound off of different objects and it was actually amazing because he was able to put a basketball in the hoop and he was able to drive a bicycle and everything just you know like using what bats use basically you know sonar and um you know I was, when i read ben's story you know i read his story when he submitted it it brought me to tears that how the wisdom that this kid had at 17 years old what he was able to see in the world and what he put and what we published um, and and to and we and now I called his mom after I read his story her name's Aquanetta and I I was like I have to speak to your son because this I can't you know 17 year olds be able to write this man I mean it's like at 17 I you know my thought process was not there with him and uh, he passed away just two weeks before I called him and uh, he, the, the, he was actually born without eyes, but the cancer that he had went to the rest of him at that age, 17 years later. But my point in sharing this, the point in bringing that up is this. There's nothing more that honorable to me than to be able to, to share that we're reaching people with that kind of depth, that have had that kind of experience and have that kind of wisdom, and to be able to share their words before they leave. And let Is it just me or did John drop off? No, he dropped off again. Yeah, he John! Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, he dropped okay. off again. Let's see, we'll give him a couple of minutes to bounce back, hopefully. John, we can't hear you. <laughs> he's probably. I'm back. Talking. <laughs> I'm back, but now I finished with that pretty much. I just I was just sharing. It's an honor. It really is. Uh, a, this is a spiritual experience that can help people in business. That's really what it is. Mm. And I always say that uh, part of what you're doing, you know, the richest places in the world are graveyards because they're full of people who didn't share their stories. And well, I yeah. think part of what we're all doing with writing our books and, and sharing our stories is just that, correct? You know what, Gertrude, and it's great, you know what, and I, I touched on that when I got cut off a little bit, was that, I mean, let's, you know, that's part of what writing is, to reach the kids, their next generation, and this, I mean, to be able to share the deepest parts of what we went through to help them as, you know, they're going through what their challenges would be, that's really what this is all about, and, you know, revealing those things while we're still here, there's nothing more important than that, really, mm -hmm. to me, you know. Yeah. Demita, um, welcome. Good to see you. We haven't talked for a while. Um, what has come up for you during the webinar so far? Um, just I'm, I'm just absorbing all the great information that that's I'm, I'm just listening and some of the questions have been asked uh, were questions I had. So I'm just really grateful for all the information that John is providing about um, reaching your audience, and that's what really. Uh, get home with me is knowing who your audience is and, and getting in that way. So yeah, I, didn't, really uh, I didn't. I didn't want to cut you off. I have a little delay here, so I. I, I, I <laughs> you heard my echo over there. I think in the back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just saying I was grateful for what you. Yeah, it's quite all right. I'm just thankful for all that you've shared, and I've just gained so much information. So just thank you so much for taking this time because it really You're helped welcome. me, especially what you said, knowing your audience. Well, you know, the other thing I want to add in that um, we do include as part of what we um, offer is that we assess your current business and your business strategy and what you're doing and what you can do more effectively. Um, see, uh, part of, I'm a voracious studier. Um, at first it was a voracious study of theology and the sciences and all that world for many, many years. 
Um, over the last decade, it's been a voracious study of businesses. I mean, so much so that yesterday I was reading about the one billion dollar um, vapor cigarette business and how the vapor cigarettes are growing, and you know the tobacco companies are taking over the vapor cigarette business. I'm sharing that because, um, you know, uh, each of you have a unique business model. You have different. You have different goals in your business. You have uh, different prioritizations, um, different skill sets different assets, different challenges, different markets, um, even though you're all sharing writing in some respect. And you really do, you really, that really does need to be looked at and addressed in order to figure out a flow of what to do when. You know, like what should I prioritize in phase one, in phase two, in phase three. And I've learned all this in building this company. And you know, I've brought millions of dollars to other companies and then in building this I really put my you know teeth to the not to the to, to the grindstone in understanding what is digital publishing how does it work where is it going and so part of what we do is we do take 30 minutes to assess your business and see how we might be able to help you improve your business by giving you ideas and resources awesome Awesome. Now I see Raywen Weller. Raywen, welcome. You're in Tauranga. Thanks for joining us. Um, Ray, I know you have recently gone through um, quite a bit of stuff. I don't know if you'd like to share it or just share what you know this webinar so far has um, brought home for you. Raywen has also written a book um, based around her sister who was born blind, who um, ended up dying at a very young age. Ray, are you there? Raywan? I think we might have lost her. Okay, we have a question there from Karen. Karen, do you want to ask your question? Oh, the question is how much does the service cost? Like, 19, uh, it's 1997, 1997 US. 1997 US. Yes, yeah, total, and that's everything. That's, um, that's writing your story, doing the interview. Doing the consult with you on your business, that's everything. So, um, you know, it's quite quite an extraordinary package put together that's really fair price. We don't really make much money in doing that after paying for all of our expenses. So our real growth is in uh, sharing the Thank God I name and in building the Thank God, you know, getting the stories out to the world. Yes, yeah. correct. <laughs> okay, Raywin was muted a few minutes ago. Ray, um, you, you, you can uh, go ahead and share. Well, I just happened to be walking past my computer and saw a Skype message from Gertrude saying, please join this. So I'm coming halfway through, and sorry, John, I'm, I don't even know the name of your company. So um, I've just been sitting back and listening. I've okay. got. I've got lots of stories, um, but I, it's quite funny because I was on a seminar this morning, on a webinar this morning, and it's all about being in the present, forget about the past. And I sort of think, well, do I bring up my old stories? <laughs> um, yeah. So okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. What was your name? Is it Raywin? That is correct. Raywin, um, you know, and when I, I do interviews, and I, I want to share this, and, I, and with every fiber of my being, I, I truly, genuinely mean what I'm saying. I, when I do interviews and I ask people, um, you know, who they are and what they're doing, I, I, I'm, I'm looking for what their goals are in terms of are we a fit for them, really. So, like, it, it depends. Number one. How important is it to get your message out to the world? You have a message that aligns with I went through a challenge, I overcame it, and I want to share that with the world. So that's primary. What's primary is, is it important for you to, would you love to overcome something and share that important thing from your heart and your mind with the world? That's primary. Obviously, that's got to be the foundation. Now, if on top of that, you are a professional writer, um, yes, then then I'm like, okay, that's a way another plus because I know what we do for writers in escalating their skills. That's unquestionable. They're you know amazing writers. What we help, never mind people that you know are learning in the learning process. We all at some level learn. So yes, escalating the writing. But if you're also again, if you're focused on it from a business perspective, yeah, you know the amount of focus that we spend on 
like two, the two other, the three, well, three things: credibility in the market, aligning yourself, networking with people, the media that we're focused on doing the net, and anytime we could find something with your story off the net, and then um, there was one other thing. Uh, was what the heck was it? <laughs> I'm, think, I'm thinking so fast. There was one other thing, but my, my point. Oh, uh, the assessment of your business. What I very clearly observed was um, that. You know, in building my business, in in spending, I was very. I've been very fortunate to be around amazing business minds. I mean, some of the most successful business minds in the world. I'm very blessed to uh, have access to them, to have conversations with them, to learn from them. Yes, I went through a tremendous amount of my own learning curves. There's no question about that. But what in having gone down the road of my my mistakes and their advice and so on and so forth, you truly do avoid years years worth of learning curves and in in time and when it comes to numbers, time, energy, effort, and money by getting sound advice by people by professionals looking at your business and saying, how could I expand my business? Because let's face it, most most writers, authors, it's business is not their primary focus. Money is not their primary focus. Writing is their primary focus. <laughs> okay, it's it's really really not. So, uh, but that doesn't mean they can't do it, and that doesn't mean that they if if they get the right advice and they get some brilliant directioning, that can really help them go a long way. So, all of those things is how we serve people. Yeah. Life is one big learning curve. Life itself is one big learning curve. But what what I was looking at is what I was is attempting to express there is that in interviewing a client, I prioritize: do they fit the model? And the model is those things: get the story out. Would I love to? Do I have one? Is that who I am? Am I a writer? What you know? Those things. Do I want more credibility? Do I want more publicity? Do I want to market my name? Do I want to get more consulting clients? Do I want to get more speaking gigs? Those are all the questions I'm looking to answer because that's what we help serve people to do. And then lastly, do you want you want help in looking at your business to see how you could make it more efficient? Because make no mistake, looking at your every day I look at my business, every single day, and I look at, okay, what are my priorities today? I wake up, God, who am I supposed to serve? Tell me, you know, I op so I am open to the universe bringing to me what I'm supposed to do and who I'm supposed to serve. And that can be, you know, the person at the corner, you know, that I saw two days ago that has a sign up that he's looking for a job, you know, and, he, he, you know, he's looking for a job and me conversing with him and saying, okay, well, here's a way I can help you by taking some of our books and selling them at the corner. You know, here's, you know, it, that's part of it. But the other, the, is serving is to wake up serving people, but every day, how can I make my business more efficient? How could I make uh, my services more efficient so that I could serve more people? And that means really, you know, understanding your business continuously because your business is a growing organism. That's what a company is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it has a life of its own, and getting professional, uh, you know, professionals to come in and look, especially you know, if, if you're authoring and consulting and speaking, all of which we do. We have um, done it with so many people. You know, like I've I've looked at so many people. We've published so many different people that you know. I worked with Wayne Dyer. He sold hundreds of millions of products, and and then I've worked with all these different authors, and I see their different models and how they sold information. How they made money with their consulting, how they made money with their seminars, their back end of the room, their front end of the room, and so we're able to look at okay, who you are, what's your business, what's your strengths, to figure out what's the best way for you to make money. Do you want to travel? Do you want to do more speaking? Do you want more consulting? Do you want small groups? Everyone's different, so you know we help you with that as well in terms of looking at your company. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome. I try, to fit in, I try to fit in as many words as I can as I'm talking. If it's a little fast, sorry, I'm a New Yorker. We, we can forgive you for that. <laughs> By the way, I absolutely love Australia. I am a big fan of Noosa. It's one of my favorite places in the world. I'm sorry, but I'm not an Australian. I'm a New Zealander. Ah, I haven't been blessed with that yet. 
<laughs> yeah, but I'm an Australian. <laughs> you know what you're missing. <laughs> <laughs> New Zealand is equally as beautiful. Mm. Okay. Um, all right, John, is there anything else you want to add? There is one person who might just join us in a few minutes who is from Afghanistan, based in Christchurch, who has just Skyped me saying he'll join us in a second. Um, but is there anything else you just want to let people know, John, just step by step? Um, yeah, uh, actually, step by step. Interested in more information? You want information about getting involved? Get to Gertrude. Um, we can here, here. We're in a. We're really in a growth. We're, we're, we're going to consistently be in a growth curve, um, but it's going to evolve more and more and more. We got a great team. I'm blessed to you know. I'm really blessed to be here and to be in this position. But you know, we have all of this experience already in what we've done and where we're going and evolving the company and evol and, and make no mistake, you guys are you ladies and gentlemen are the company. Your stories are our inspiration and the net really opens up our opportunity to bring your stories out there. And there's nothing more that I would really love to do than to help you craft something brilliant. And if you're dealing with a challenge, I could, and I'll share this. I haven't done this for 20 plus years. I could promise this. With every, I could absolutely promise this. The process of writing a thank God I story and learning how to balance your perceptions better and bring your and equilibrate your emotions to get yourself to the thank God I place with your story, whatever your story is. But learning that process will be the most valuable thing or at least among the most valuable thing you ever practice in your life and I know Did John say it again there? He's jumped off. Hmm. Yeah. Hold that because they in my are. 20s like I said I discovered Hello? Okay. In my yeah, 20s off there, it became clear to me can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. can hear you now. All right. I'll just close it up with this. In my 20s, I learned that life itself is a series of us attracting circumstances, one-sided events, that events that we perceive as one-sided that are challenges, until we eventually are able to balance out our emotions and see both sides. And that the faster we get at being able to do that, the more we maintain a state of presence and it's a skill to be honed and practiced. Writing a thank God I story will do a ton of business things for you but at the very core of your essence it will help you uh, build deeper presence and evolve your consciousness and that really is what this is all about and that those leadership skills are what will attract more people to you and expand your sphere of influence. That I guarantee. So, John. Uh, yes, somebody. So sorry, said so John. Do we pay you to write a thank God I story in your? No, event? you no no. You pay us for a package, and part of that package is you get the guidelines, and you um write it, and then we go back and forth with you for three sessions at one hour a session to co-write the story with you. Yeah, and uh, what if you just. I don't understand. What if you just write your own story without needing that? Um, you, we don't. We're, we publish the stories that we know you've been through the process with our coaches. I've done this long enough, and when we're taking New York Times bestsellers or we're taking people like William Whitecloud who sold two million books, and he's like, "I will definitely pass my next book through your group." It's because we know we improve the author's story. We know we help them, and. But what we do is then after we work with you, we publish it. So we publish your story and we market your story. So we're not just, we help you co-write it and then we publish it and we market it. Okay, so that's the criteria of publishing on your site. Yeah, and then we also, like I said, we assess your business, we help you expand your business, but what you're getting is uh, media. Beyond the crafting of the story itself, which it will help, it will be helped, we, we media, we put your story out to the world and publicize you. Yeah. 
And yeah, so what you know, you, I'm sure you have other writings. You have another book. If you, that what you use that for is an introduction. Hey, I'm Karen, and um, here's my other book that I've written. Blah blah blah. Whatever that is. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. So okay. the meat. <laughs> So the media is through the internet, or is it other media? Well, yeah, that's what I, sh I I was sharing a little earlier. Is like um, there's three forms of media. Now that I have the internet hooked up, down into integrated into systems of hundreds of thousands of people, linked into the blog between Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter and all that. Now that I have that system set up, done, escalating and working, and it will evolve, evolve, evolve. Um, it's also media. I, we've done some. Um, I've been written up in the Huffington Post. We've been on ABC TV, but not to this level that we're going to take it to now. I mean, I'm, I, I just was in contact with ABC News about an event that I'm doing with a 10-year New York Yankee here, you know, a New York Yankee, which is a ball team here in the States. And so what I'm sharing with you is that our focus is threefold, events, media, and the internet, all of them. We see the right place for your story in the media, it's going to the media. You see a way to do an event with us, we'll do an event with you. You follow me? Yes. So it's all three It's all three focuses. We're very much about being offline as much as we are about being online, but make no mistake, I spent years focusing on a digital system because I realized that that was the hub and that was the centralized locus point in order to organize infrastructure because with that done you could localize anything you want live and you could aggressively take care of any media that you get. I'm yeah, all, I, I, in fact, I'm already I've, I'm in I'm speaking with um, a top producer that's responsible for 10% of the content on the History Channel, uh, 400 different shows, and he's sharing the Thank God I program with several different networks that have shared interest, large networks, in a show for Thank God I. I don't have that done yet. I'm not saying I do, but what I am saying is we've already been featured in films. We will we will create our own station. We are focused on media and we are focused on the internet. It's both, Karen. And since one other thing to add, my background is the '90s, uh, and I did no, I also did off. other. Ones. My Drop okay, off. can you hear me? My Your my focus. My background is events. I did events for years with people like Wayne Dyer, Edward Griffin, John D. Martini, all kinds of people. You can I did seminars. So we will expand upon events and seminars um, around the world as well. Cool. So I want to thank you, ladies, and close this with please. We would love to serve you. Take advantage of the opportunity to work with us now. Get to Gertrude. She will put you in touch. Get her through email. She'll put us in touch with us so that we can answer any of your questions. And I, I would love to serve you in transcending any challenges and getting your hearts and your stories out to the world. That's what we do, and I'd love to do it for all of you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much, John. Thank you, Gertrude. Love to you all. I look forward to each one of you. Thanks, Thanks John. John. I'll have this transcribed and I'll send you the transcript. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.